Hello students, in this video lecture we are going to discuss an another important topic from the chapter of sexual reproduction of flowering plants and that is about the structure of microsporangium. We have already gone through the flower structure and we have already discussed the structure of the anther as well. Alright, now we will see that what is the internal component of the anther looks like. So as you can see on your screen, there is the representation of the transverse section of anther. Alright, so this is usually the transverse section of anther as you can see. And this transverse section of anther is showing us the figure or the component of microsporangium which we already have studied a little bit about uh, of microsporangium already in the video of the uh, anther part. Alright, now let's start with the microsporangium now. Microsporangium we know that as discussed previously that this microsporangium is considered to be as a future pollen sac. So, it represents future pollen sac and this pollen sac is going to bear the pollen grains which represents the male gametophyte. Alright, so this is the case. Now, talking about its structure now. Alright, so the structure of microsporangium is basically divided into four different wall layers. So, this is the transverse section which means TS of microsporangium. So, if you look into the structure of microsporangium, then it is composed of four wall layers. So, in those wall layers if we are talking about that wall layers are the first is the epidermis, the second is the endothesium, then the third represents the middle layers and the fourth represents the tapetum. So, epidermis, endothesium, middle layers and tapetum. Alright, so this starting of the three layers, alright, we will also see individually that how these layers are arranged in the microsporangium. Alright, so this first, second and third layers which you can see that means epidermis, endothesium and middle layers, they perform the function of protecting the pollen grains, that means protection. They are also responsible for dehiscence of anthers to release pollen. Dehiscence means bursting. So, here the word dehiscence is indicating the bursting of anther. So, uh, I am repeating it again. So, the first three layers of the microsporangium which are epidermis, endothesium and middle layers, they perform the function of protecting the pollen grains. They will perform the protection of the inner walls of the pollen grain and protecting the contents of the in fact anther you can say and they will also prepare the anther to dehisce or burst once they are matured enough to give rise to pollen grains or to release the pollen grains you can say which are the male gametophyte. Alright, we will now see in the figure that where are they actually localized. Now see, so this one, this layer is representing epidermis. Alright, this one is endothesium, then this one are the middle layers and this one innermost layer is representing the tapetum. So, we have already seen the functions of the first three layers that means epidermis, endothesium and middle layers. But what about the innermost layer which is tapetum? So, this tapetum which is the innermost layer of microsporangium. Now, this tapetum is responsible for providing nourishment to the pollen grains. Alright, you know since tapetum is the innermost layer that means the layer which is closest to the pollen grains or closest to the area where the pollen grains will be actually produced. So, this tapetum provides nourishment developing 
pollen grains. So they are going to provide nourishment to the developing pollen grains. All right, this is the case. Now, this is the connective tissue that we were talking about. And we have already discussed this in the anther video. All right, so this is the connective tissue, which is connecting the two lobes of the anther. All right, and this part, which you can see, is representing the sporogenous tissue. That means it's a precursor tissue through which the pollen grains will be actually produced. So that is the case. All right. And these red dots which you can see over here, the red dots which are being visible. So you can say that they are representing the pollen grains. All right. So this is the labelings of the entire microsporangium. Now one thing which is very important in case of tapetum is that tapetum is usually considered to be as a binucleate or a multinucleated tissue having dense cytoplasm. All right. So since it has to provide nourishment to the developing pollen grains, so one of the most important features, I'll just use a different color. So one of the important features of tapetum is that, that this tapetum, these are usually bi or multinucleated. So these are bi or multinucleated cells with dense cytoplasm. All right. So this was about the structure of microsporangium that we have seen. Now we will talk about the process of microsporogenesis itself here. All right. Now, so let's talk about microsporogenesis now. Now, microsporogenesis is one such process that results into the formation of microspores from the pollen mother cells. All right. So this is a process which involves the formation of microspores from the pollen mother cells. And mind me that this microsporogenesis occurs in microsporangium only. All right. So this is the process of formation of microspores from pollen mother cells. All right. In shortly, they are called as PMCs through meiosis. One thing to note in this part is that this pollen mother cell is usually deployed in nature. Now we'll see that how the actual process of microsporogenesis takes place. All right. So we have already seen, let me just maximize this part. So we have already seen that the center of each microsporangium is occupied by sporogenous tissue. That means this one is representing the sporogenous tissue. So we can say that the center of each microsporangium is occupied by sporogenous tissue. Now, this is the only tissue through which the pollen mother cells will be formed. All right. So, this is the precursor tissue, as I already told you. You know, the cells of the sporogenous tissue is ultimately going to differentiate into pollen mother cell. Each cell of this tissue differentiates into PMC, which is pollen mother cell. So, through this, we have known that if the sporogenous tissue is deployed, then definitely the microspore mother cell or you can say the pollen mother cell will also be deployed, which we have already seen in the above portion. All right. Now, each of the cell of the sporogenous tissue is actually differentiating into the pollen mother cell. Now, this pollen mother cell, PMC, all right, which is usually what? Which is deployed. Now, this pollen mother cell is going to undergo the process of meiosis. That means reduction division followed by mitosis. So, firstly, there will be the reduction division. All right. And then there will be the mitotic division. All right. So, this pollen mother cell 
undergoes meiotic division to give rise to microspore tetrad so since it has undergone the process of meiosis so the chromosome number will be reduced to half it is a reduction division all right so it will be here and when the anther is going to mature and dehydrate all four microspores are released all right and develops into pollen grains that means each microspore is going to produce one pollen grain so there will be the process of the formation of four pollen grain from one pollen mother cell so we have seen from this part that one pmc here is giving rise to four you know pollen grains over here all right so this pollen mother cell is giving rise to microspore tetrad which is of haploid nature and that microspore tetrad is ultimately going to mature and develop into four pollen grains all right so diagrammatically if uh, this has to be represented like for example i'll just use it so this is the pollen mother cell which is diploid all right and this is going to undergo the process of meiosis to give rise to what microspore tetrad as already talked about so this is going to give rise to microspore tetrad like this so the microspore since it is tetrad so it will look like this that means all the four of them they are attached to one another and ultimately they will be released into pollen grains all right so there will be four pollen grains formed like this individually all right so this is how the process of microsporogenesis takes place so in this video lecture we have seen the structure of the microsporangium along with the process of the microsporogenesis as well thank you